Resistance is futile. Boldly going where no show has gone before. This is The Week in Geek with David D. Squared and Brian Held. Heard live on News Talk 99.5 WRNO and the iHeartRadio app. Here are your hosts, Brian Held and D Squared. Greetings, people of Earth. This is The Week in Geek, your source for geek and pop culture news that's trending now. I'm your host, D Squared, along with Brian Held. Brian, how are you doing today, Buckaroo? Oh man, I'm good, man. It's been a crazy weekend. It's been real long. Uh, all kind of crazy stuff going on. They had the uh, 11th annual Louisiana Film Industry Award, uh, Christmas dinner last night. Did you get an award? I, no, I didn't get an award. But uh, I met some really cool people, and uh, I met a young lady who I'm going to get booked on the show probably next month. Um, you'll be excited this to see her. This is adult films, right? No, it is not adult films. It is just the... You lost me already. All right, Brian, lay out the show for us real quick. All right. Well, of course, we're going to open up the show with top nerd news, everything that's hot this week. Then we'll have our boy Skungy in his pick of the week telling us uh, about some new cool stuff and the video game award review. He's going to do that. Then our guest is J.R. Mounts. He's an independent creator. He's got some really cool stuff we're going to talk about. Then we'll close out the show as we always do with This Week in Geek History. J.R. Mounts. That's his name. Okay. I, 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 I thought you said we weren't doing adult films today. <laughs> oh, God, Dave. <laughs> and now, your top nerd news stories from around the world, brought to you by the Viridian Tea Company. Find them on Etsy. And now, your top nerd news stories. So I got, I got a feeling uh, J.R. Mounts is probably not going to want to come back on the show after what I just said. <laughs> You're so mean, Dave. <laughs> Awesome name. What? I wish I had the last name Mounts. Yes. So uh, we do have to announce our prize winner for uh, last week. Do you want to do that now? You want to wait? Wait, wait, wait one second. No, I don't. Ha- yeah, wait. No, I'm okay. Nope, not that's not it. <laughs> there you go. All right. So for our first Christmas prize pack, which includes the book Pantheon by Eric Cyrodiil. Our winner is Mr. Ashley Nichols. Shut the front door. That's, we know that guy. We do know that guy. So thanks to Google Random Number Generator. <laughs> that, that's how we did it? That's how we do it, yes. All right. What's topping us off today on Top Nerd News? Well, we absolutely have to talk about Avengers Endgame. That trailer <gasps> dropped this week. To much fanfare. Everybody's freaking out. It's like the most viewed trailer ever. Um, what did you think? I I don't know. I wanted I don't know what I wanted from it. I mean, uh after I watched it I felt a little deflated. It was just, you know, it was there. Uh, you, you got Tony, you know, wax and poetic and then uh I don't know here. Let's take a listen to it. Okay. Stay on. Hey, Miss Bunts. If you find this recording, don't feel bad about this. Part of the journey is the end. Just for the record, being adrift in space with zero promise of rescue is more fun than it sounds. Food and water ran out four days ago. Oxygen will run out tomorrow morning. That'll be it. When I drift off, I will dream about you. Oh. It's always you. We lost. All of us. You lost friends. You lost family. We lost a part of ourselves. This is the fight of our lives. This is going to work, Steve. I know it is. Because I don't know what I'm going to do if it doesn't. Hi, uh, is anyone home? This is the best this part of the trip. This is Scott Lang. We met a few years ago at the airport in Germany. Got got really big. Is this an old message? Ant-Man. Ant-Man. I know you know. I know you know that. That's the front door. That's me. Can you buzz me in? That's the best part. Can you buzz me in? So just, you you just like that comedic element, just getting put in there. Uh, yeah, I, I mean. Well, okay. we, we already know. It's like, oh, we lost family and loved ones, and no, you didn't. They're all coming back. Well, but they those characters don't know that. 
I, oh, come on, Dave. I mean, I understand that you didn't like Avengers 3, that you were no, like... I, I did not like it. I just didn't love it. I just didn't... I, I, I loved the movie. I'll take it. I'll take that back. Okay. Uh, I, I just thought the ending where everybody's just like, oh, oh my God, everybody's dead. Oh, and people are like losing their minds. It's like, have you never read a freaking comic book? I mean, you know these people are going to be coming back. I mean, especially when you kill off Spider-Man and Black Panther and the sequel's already in the works. All right. Now you're metagaming, Dave. All right. You- what? <laughs> it, it, you go into these movies. Who in this world now has gone into some of these movies not knowing at least some of the backstory now? Because it's Avengers 4. That means there's one, two, three before it. Or at, at three, there was one, two before it. And eight billion other movies. I'm going to go down a How quick... How do you not know? I'm going to go down a quick rabbit trail because you brought up something very important. Is that I read a, an article about the last Avengers movie and how it itself as a movie doesn't really stand on its own. You can take somebody who's never seen a Marvel Comics movie, show okay. them that movie, and they will have no idea what's happening, period. Yeah. Because you have to have watched the previous 20-some-odd movies right. in order to understand it, which makes it a bad movie, to be honest, right? Because there should be enough context to well, understand yeah, what's right. happening. It, 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 it pays off if you've watched all the other movies. It like, does. Like that, it, that movie is kind of like the money shot. Yeah, it is. So, But regardless, I, I'm excited for it. There's a lot of little bit of... Easter eggs that are in this trailer that are fun. Um, there's speculation that uh, Tony is on the Benatar, right? Which we saw in Guardians of the Galaxy, the the ship. Uh, and of course, uh, it looks like Nebula is going to probably end up rescuing him. Okay, you know, just from what we see in the trailer, yeah, uh, we wait, get to see the hell, Hawkeye as Ronan. I don't remember that. What the, the it's the that? ship, the name of one of the ships that the Guardians use. Oh, so all right. yes, um, and then um, Hawkeye is Ronan. Wait, how do you? He's Ronan, right? It, it's a it's a, a a a character in Marvel Comics that Clint Barton adopted. He was the second person to adopt that character title, and with the sword and everything being yeah, in I, Japan, I, I don't remember the whole Ronan thing. I, but I I, I kind of dug it just because I could see him just wanting to go on a murder spree. Because I I would guess for for plot sake, they probably. Thanos snapped his family away. Yeah, so probably so. Pretty much that was his whole, uh, it was his center. That's what kept him sane. So, yeah, I could see him going on a murder spree. I mean, I kind of dug that. That There's certain little things about this that, yeah, like I, I'm excited to see the movie, but the trailer didn't scratch any itches. Right. It, it well, didn't, you know. It was did just, you see in the video screens in that the Avengers, like, control room or whatever? It, uh, Banner was there looking at uh, Scott Lang's picture. Right. You had Scott Lang. You had uh, Peter Parker and Shuri was was on the screen oh, so okay. there's speculation that that sure got part of the snapping right <laughs> <laughs> i yeah i mean uh, i guess yeah I, we don't need uh, uh, we'll find out when the movie comes out i mean i guess at this point it's like what is the trailer gonna do it i'm gonna go watch the damn movie so at this point a trailer is moot I mean, I don't need a trailer to know that I'm going to go see this movie. I don't. Who who do you have to show this trailer to? Who has not seen one, two, and three is going to be like, oh yeah, I'm just going to jump in on on four just because looks right. pretty interesting. Oh look, this sad man stuck in space. Oh look, a blonde and a guy with a five o'clock shadow are waxing poetic about friends and family. I'm in. Oh, so you noticed that the beard got caught in the snapping too, right? Did it? Yeah, Captain America's beard. He lost the beard. No, I just I, I, I went right over my head. I don't All right, what you go over there? All right, but look, I, look. April twenty sixth is uh, the new revised date. Right, we're all going to go see it. I mean, who 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 is going to watch this and be like, oh, now I'm definitely going to go? <laughs> I mean, really, who is that person out there? I want to meet them. Okay, two six zero zero ninety nine five. Swear to God. <laughs> what's next? What's next? You really, really wanted to talk about Marvel Ultimate Alliance three. Scungy does too. Look, this game is fun, fun, fun. It's one of the. It, it's kind of like uh, I don't know Diablo and Gauntlet, but you get to play by yourself and you got all the four characters and you get to run around. It's fun. It, 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 it you can play all the characters you want from the whole Marvel universe. And so the last one we got was ten years ago. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, this is cool. The only downside is that it's only going to be on the Switch, which really sucks. Right. And this is focused on the Black Order, so it's taking elements of Infinity it War. It is basically Infinity War, yeah. where the Black Order shows up. They're like, and, and you've got to go get the Infinity Stones before they do, or before Thanos gets them. 
Yeah. So it's just like, yeah, uh, we know the storyline. No. Just, the best part is you just get to play as many different characters from all of Marvel that you want. Well, and it looks like a four-player drop-in, drop-out co-op. and uh, Yeah, uh, dude, I mean, that was the best part of the game, man. I mean, that that game was so much fun because Scungy will remember exactly what, what, uh, what game it was based off because of, he it, it, he made the analogy. I'm like, yes, that's exactly it. And I can't remember what it is right yeah. now. All right. Uh, Counter-Strike Global Offensive. They got 14,000 negative Steam reviews in one day. Um, so they charged for the game. Yeah. And now they went ahead and just decided to make it for free. And they added a Battle Royale mode. Interesting. Um, so I, as I was driving to the station tonight, I was dropping the kids off with the grandparents. And I even told DJ, I'm like, hey, you know, uh, CSGO is now uh, free. He's like, what? What? I'm like, yeah, on Steam. He's like, I'm going to get it because, you know, he couldn't afford it, didn't want to buy it. I mean, he's got 8 million other. I don't know where he gets all this money for Fortnite. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't be stealing it out of my wallet. I don't know. But, you know, he's going to play that. But now all these people are, are losing their collective minds because they feel that because they bought the game and now that it's free, they either A, deserve a refund or um, they deserve a refund. Or or some sort of badge or something on their profile that shows that they, they got a loyalty badge. Yeah, and I think something that, like that. That was the participation trophy that people got upset. It was like, oh, all I get is a stinking badge. Well, and there's something too in here about prime matchmaking. About if you linked your a real phone number to your account, uh, then you could get better matching up for for the the games. And now apparently, just everyone who purchased it prior to the free to play is part of this matchmaking thing and so some people are aggravated about that look here here's the thing you bought a game you bought it when it came out right because they suddenly make it free does not entitle you to a damn refund it doesn't no. entitle you to anything this is just something so a little pet peeve of mine or just like the way a bunch of these lazy ass kids nowadays are just like uh oh i'm entitled to this no you're not you bought it. Why do you think I'm notoriously cheap, Brian? Because I've been burnt by these kind of scams before. <laughs> right. It's like, I'm waiting for it to go on sale. It doesn't go on sale. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to go buy this 40-inch TV with a with three HDMI ports. Ooh, I buy it for $400. You know, a month, two months later, it's down like 200 bucks or, you know, 150 And I'm like, damn you! So maybe, maybe those kids need to frame it in the perspective that they are paying a premium for early access. Sure. There you go. <laughs> you got an advanced copy for full price. Yes. <laughs> uh, look, I, I I think it's a bunch of uh bunch of crybabies. Honestly, I mean, look, you you buy the game, you played the game. Did you dislike the game? You know, I, I, look, I, that's one thing about GameStop that I do like. If you buy a game and it sucks, you can bring it back. Right. But you not, know, not. I did that with Dead Rising Three. Not so much anymore because a lot of because of these games are, are digital codes versus physical media well, nowadays. Yeah. It's much harder. Look, I think these kids should know damn well by now. You, you know, I think most people. And I keep saying kids, even people our age are probably just as dumb sometimes. But it's like you know, you 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 you, you get these games and uh, look. Uh, I don't know. I lost my train of thought. Damn okay. It. Well, how about we get it back on track? Okay. You know, last week, and real quick, the, the Video Game Awards came out this week. Scungy's going to talk about it in a little bit. But uh, last week, we trashed the heck out of Fallout 76. Yes. Uh, very much deservingly. In fact, uh, just a quick update. So folks who bought the collector's edition, like me, can go and put a customer service complaint in and they will now give us our canvas bag that they promised. Oh, that's nice. Uh, of right? Them. They're going to go manufacture it. However, right when that <laughs> happened, people started going and registering in their customer service system. And then they found out that I can see all the tickets that have been inserted in here in this system. And I can see everyone's Oh, my God. Name their address and, and phone addresses numbers. And yeah. credit card that, information. That's, oh, so and, that's how it happened? Well, that's what the most recent debacle that's happened with wow. them. And I'm like, well, I'm glad I, you know, didn't immediately go and, and do that. So I haven't done that yet. So I didn't get burned yet. But uh, there's hope out there. Um, the guys over at Obsidian, they, of course, did Fallout 1 and 2. They did Fallout New Vegas, which is one of the most beloved versions of the game. Right. Announced the Outer Worlds at the Video Game Awards. And this, everybody's kind of saying it's the Fallout we deserve. Here you go. Listen. Ah, there you are. Wondering what's going on, eh? One question first. Are you feeling anything that can be construed as explosive cell death? 
No? Wonderful. Let's get started. Wonderful. Welcome to the edge of the galaxy, the frontier of space. Well, at least it was until the corporations bought it, branded it, and started selling it at ludicrously inflated prices. And the rest of your fellow settlers? Abandoned on the edge of the colony. I'd save them myself, but the board's got a bounty on my head. So, that's why I thought you out. You appear capable. So, it almost had a flashback of, like, Fallout with, with uh, you know, you're, you're stuck in your little pod, your cryopod, and you mm-hmm. see your, your wife and family get murdered. Which right. one was that? Was that that was uh, Fallout 4. Yeah. So, I look, it... it, it even when they showed little uh, snapshots of the of the town, it had that whole uh, fallout feel of just like you know, or almost maybe the opening of uh, what's uh, the 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 Matt Groening sh- the Futurama yeah <laughs> like eat eat bachelor chow that's what some <laughs> of those those signs reminded me of well and what's interesting is this is sort of getting billed like a space western kind of like Firefly which mm. should you know definitely appeal to all of those fans I'm excited about it uh, you know. Like I said, I love New Vegas so much well, so that I have a cosplay from New Vegas. Right. So I mean, but, but this this looks like it might be more uh, in the line of that we were what we were all hoping Fallout seventy six would be, where you know you get to cruise around and and meet strange new interesting people and kill them if you feel like it. Pretty much. Yeah. Which so. you know seventy six is a dumpster fire. I haven't even played it this week to be honest. Wow. Yeah. All um, right, Scungy is waiting patiently on the line. Is he? Yeah. Um, w- one last thing, real quick. I just want to talk about this. This uh, rapper, Two Millie. Apparently, he's suing Fortnite for copying his signature dance moves. And I thought this was amusing because you know <laughs> really? Fortnite has all these dance emotes for all the characters, yeah, right. and they're based off of real world dances. Mm-hmm. This has been going on back all the way to World of Warcraft, the original oh my God, release yeah. <laughs> for all the dance emotes. And I'm like, why is suddenly this guy, you know, somebody you getting have to sued. Buy them because you have to buy them now. Well, you have to pay. You have to pay with them for V bucks. That costs money. So if you want that stupid dance move, you got to pay. Like I think it's like five bucks, basically. Interesting. Well, it's not like World of Warcraft didn't profit off the game as a whole. And no, that was but, part but of it. specifically, you're buying that one that one dance move for four four bucks. Okay. And so they're they are technically deriving profit from his dance, but whether or not he made that up, come on, it's not like he, did he create the Harlem Shuffle. Dance moves can you know, be the copyrighted. Patch? They they can be copyrighted, Dave. Yeah, well, good luck on that. <laughs> All right. All right, guys, stay tuned. When we get back, we'll have our boy Scungy in his pick of the week. Stay tuned. You're listening to The Week in Geek on News Talk 99.5 WRNO. Boldly going where no bar has gone before. The Bad Wolf is a bar, restaurant, and game shop all in one. You can't beat our specialty drinks, fresh food, and a variety of RPGs, board games, and miniature games for sale or rent. Stop by and hang out. Or attend one of our regularly scheduled events all in a non-smoking environment. The Bad Wolf Bar and Grill is located at 2010 O'Connor Street in Gretna or find us at badwolfbar.com. The Bad Wolf Bar and Grill, where everybody knows you. Your game. Friends, is your morning tea just not your cup of tea? Then try the tea blends of Viridian Tea Company. At Viridian Tea Company, they sell blends guaranteed to make you think outside the box. With such blends as Tea of the Necropolis, Quantum Mechanics, Spider Witch, and many more, your tea experience will be out of this world. Look for the blends at Tubby and Coo's Mid City Bookshop, located at 631 North Carrollton, or on Etsy at Viridian Tea Company. Try Viridian Tea Company today. Your taste buds will thank you. You've waited for it, and now it's here. Get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt and help support our show. These 100% cotton black t-shirts with the Week in Geek Radio Show logo are going fast. So don't wait. Go to twigradio.com and order your shirt now. Just go to twigradio.com and get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt. 15 bucks up to XL, $17 for 2X and 3X. That's twigradio.com. Matahari, Agent H-21, is a spy fiction short story anthology about the famous dancer, seductress, and spy from World War I. Matahari, Agent H-21, published by Pro Se Productions, has seven rip-roaring adventure tales about the world-famous super spy that features her battling her enemies by using any weapons at her disposal. Matahari, Agent H-21, is available for purchase in ebook and paperback formats on Amazon.com. 
Do you have a message or logo that you need the world to see? Then rely on the folks at Gretna Signworks to use their expertise to deliver your design. With over 15 years in business, Gretna Signworks can do commercial and yard signs, banners, screen printed t-shirts, magnetic signs, vehicle graphics and lettering, and so much more. Gretna Signworks also has an exceptional network of suppliers, so no job is out of scope. Find Gretna Signworks on Facebook or visit them at 2125 Bell Chase Highway today. This is the Week in Geek with D Squared and Brian Held. Outstanding. Miss any of today's show? Download the Geek Podcast at WRNO.com. Here are your hosts, D Squared and Brian Held. Welcome back into the Week in Geek, your source for geek and pop culture news that's trending now. I'm your host, D Squared with Brian Held. All right, Brian, guess what time it is, buddy? My favorite time. Yeah. I am not what you would call a handsome man. Scungy's Pick of the Week is brought to you by GameStop and ThinkGeek.com. Scungy's Pick of the Week. He might be an idiot savant. Woohoo! All right, I am having technical difficulties at the moment for some reason. I can't get Scungy up on the board. Really? Yeah, I don't know what's going on. It just seems the kind of day I am having. No. For the love of God. So, uh, I know Scungy's going to talk about Super Smash Brothers Ultimate uh, on the Switch. And, um, well, let's see. What else do we have to talk about? There was a bunch of topics. There that, we go. Oh, All you right, got him I now? got him. Scungy, what's shaking, Bacon? Hi. How y'all doing, guys? We're super. Thanks for asking. All right, what are we talking about tonight? We're talking about Super Smash Brothers Ultimate on the Switch. Awesome. So, is the Switch taking over everything? Basically, the Switch is hot, man. The Switch is, like, really hot. It's selling, like, it's selling out for the holidays. It's hot. It's I'm super hot. Out of them yeah, I my burn store. my fingers. It's, it's so hot. Crazy. All right. All right. So, uh, Super Smash Brothers, we 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 know it. We played it. You know, what's so special about this Ultimate Edition? Well, it's basically, it's got every single character ever in Smash Brothers. Except Waluigi. Before I go any that mm. it's actually cost a lot of stir just because Waluigi is not in the game. But everybody else is there. Over 70 fighters in this game. It's got over 100 stages. New game modes and everything. Now, Smash is a probably, it's, it's one of the most popular fighting games out there. I mean, with Evo, and there are so many different um, fighting tournaments just centered around Smash. Well, and wasn't it uh, real big? It was the GameCube? Yeah, it's it originally came out on the on the sixty four, but it was the GameCube version, um, Melee, which really just skyrocketed the pop- popularity of it. Yeah, because I know and turned it into the more more popular fighting where it's at tournaments now. Yeah, because we, we you know we sometimes go to the independent gaming league events that are around the city, and we'll see you know you've got all these brand new systems, Xbox Ones and PS fours, and then there's these old GameCubes in the corner, and people are just ripping it up with uh, Super Smash Brothers. Absolutely. This one is, I think this one's going to replace it. Okay. It, I think they finally have gotten a worthy successor for the one that was on the GameCube. Um, it's, like I said, it's got all those different characters, and they add a little thing called spirits where you can add to your character, um, which gives like little things, um, like kind of akin to how Mortal Kombat, I mean, uh, Injustice 2 was. Uh, where you got gear for your character. This will give, like, you know, you start with a certain item or you've got bigger, like, higher jumps or your defense is a little bit higher. You can unlock these spirits through the game mode, through the main uh, the story mission, which is extensive, like 30 hours, which is amazing for a fighting game to have a, uh, a story mode that long. Wow. Um, and it's, it's challenging, too. Man, this game's challenging. It's basically this game is firing on all cylinders. It is probably the it's the best rendition of a Smash Brothers game to date. I think I think they did a really good job on this one. Okay. Wow. That's pretty high praise. And you know, I just I like the idea that you're gonna start seeing switches at these tournaments versus, you know, the GameCubes. Yeah, it's it's like I said, the Switch is they're, this is the year of the Switch, man. They're just, they're like doing hit after hit after hit. And they've got even more going, which I'll get into in a moment um, with the Game Awards. Okay. Um, but yeah, this it's available on a Switch. It's uh, 
There is a fighter pass, which comes with five fighter packs. That's only twenty four ninety nine. So it's not, it's not out of this world, you know, un, you know, ungodly expensive. What's a fighter so, pack? The fighter pack is basically the season pass. You're going to have uh, five extra fighters. It comes with each pack. It comes with five packs. Each pack comes with fighter, alternative costume, and a map to play on. Okay, mm. interesting. So <laughs> get that little DLC bump for uh, Nintendo there. Yeah, well, D- I mean, they're, they're, they have their online service now where you actually have to pay for it, kind of like Sony and Microsoft, but it's only 20 bucks for a year to play online, and you get access to classic Nintendo games like Mario and Zelda and stuff like that. All right. Uh, to answer Dave's earlier question, what is the game that inspired Marvel Ultimate Alliance? Uh, it is basically Marvel Ultimate Alliance is the love child of Gauntlet and Diablo. Okay. That was close. I yeah. knew it was something like that. Yeah. All right. That's cool. So, and so, which we'll go into the Game Awards were this past week. We're on Thursday night. All right. Shoot. The Game Awards are, in, they're my favorite video game awards because it's basically by developers and gamers for gamers and developers. They don't, they don't beat around the bush. They know, you know, these awards are for the people who deserve it. They will talk about topics that are, meaningful in the gaming community, and even call out big-name developers for their wrongdoings. Really? So you're saying that they burned a suit of power armor and effigy for Fallout, right? <laughs> basically, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're the ones who basically called out Konami and called them cowards for not letting Kojima show up to the uh, awards. Wow. Okay. So, but they, so they had their big awards, and you know, just to do some of the highlights of it, Game of the Year was won by God of War for nice. the PlayStation 4, and rightly so, it really was a great game. Uh, multiplayer I'm and ongoing Red Dead Redemption game didn't get it. was won by Dave's favorite game. The which one? Dave's favorite game, Fortnite. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, but uh, yeah, they had that like, and the cool thing about this awards is also not only they give awards away to like games and everything, but they're really big on the esports side of it. Really? So they have awards for the best esports player who went to Dominique McLean. Um they the best esports game, the best esports coach. Um the best esports team was Cloud Nine. Okay. There's yeah. even like moments and everything esports, like the moments and like the best league, which the League of Legends League won the best league, not Overwatch. Sorry, really? Brian. No, that's cool. Well, what was the best game? The best uh, esports game? The best esports game was Overwatch, though. Okay, yeah, no, they're they're doing it right. So, and I'm I'm happy to see that they're going on the road season two. They're going to be taking games all over the place. What? Uh, yeah, whatever. What uh, do you mean, whatever? Uh, whatever. I mean, they're going on the road. Great. Whoop the freaking do. It's not like they're. they're there's not enough esport venues for it, so I, I I don't care. I really just don't care. Okay, <laughs> D- Dave's a little but, grumpy tonight. No, it's, just, uh, it's all right. Overwatch. It's, I mean, I don't know. what is he not grumpy? Right. Okay. So keep Thursdays going. Thursdays at four. But, but yeah, so there's. Um, but then the other big thing about the game awards are the reveals. This is like next to E3. This is where a lot of people go to find what new games are coming out. They've used this platform to reveal new games, and there were some shockers. Number one, there was Mortal Kombat 11 was announced. Nobody had any idea this was coming out, and it's coming out also on the Switch. And All right. it comes out in April. What? Nice. And then the other big one, which is one of my favorite games, it was actually the first game I ever reviewed on the show, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. Yeah. <laughs> there yeah. you go. We talked about yeah. it a little earlier, yeah. Yeah, and it's a Switch exclusive. Yes. That is like a yeah. huge coup for the Switch. But you also, like, they also announced, um, they showed some more gameplay from Anthem. They announced the Outer World game. Um, they had Outer World. Uh, that- Dragon yep. Age. Right, right. Yeah, and then also another one of my favorite games, they showed the reveal trailer of Psychonauts 2. So, you know, it's it's just a great, great experience, and I really love this award show. And you can go and go back and watch the entire thing, and you also, like, they, they also give a lot of love to the indie developers, too. Yeah. And that's a cool thing, like, for Best Moment, Best Innovation, you know, it best indie studio, so it's really cool, and I highly suggest anybody you can go and stream it 
online and watch everything you missed and all the trailers for some of these really great games that are going to be coming out. Yeah, they had like a pre-award show award portion of it like beforehand. Like I was watching it on Twitter or something and it was like two French guys won. And it was so funny because they're like, we didn't think we would win, so we didn't write a speech or anything. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Nice. <laughs> So, so that's a, yeah, that's the cool thing oh, about geez. it. I mean, like I said, by gamers for gamers. Awesome. All right, Scungy. Um, well, can we fire him yet? Uh, well, any anything hey. else you want to mention in the video game world? No, no. I think you. I think you can fire me. That's fine. Yes. NFC South champs. I'm cool. All right. Oh, good deal. All right. Well, thank you, Scungy. We appreciate it. <laughs> All right, guys. All right, guys. Stay tuned. When we get back. We're going to have our interview with J.R. Mounts. Stay tuned. You're listening to The Week in Geek on News Talk 99.5 WRNO. Boldly going where no bar has gone before. The Bad Wolf is a bar, restaurant, and game shop all in one. You can't beat our specialty drinks, fresh food, and a variety of RPGs, board games, and miniature games for sale or rent. Stop by and hang out or attend one of our regularly scheduled events all in a non-smoking environment. The Bad Wolf Bar and Grill is located at 2010 O'Connor Street in Gretna or find us at badwolfbar.com. The Bad Wolf Bar and Grill, where everybody knows your game. Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmaid by Nancy Hansen, is now an audiobook read for you by Brian Held. It's a tale of a young girl from Tortuga who disguises herself as a boy and bluffs her way onto a pirate ship, chasing after her one true love, only to find adventure on the high seas. Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmaid is available on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. Get your copy of Jezebel Johnston today. Do you have a message or logo that you need the world to see? Then rely on the folks at Gretna Signworks to use their expertise to deliver your design. With over 15 years in business, Gretna Signworks can do commercial and yard signs, banners, screen printed t-shirts, magnetic signs, vehicle graphics and lettering, and so much more. Gretna Signworks also has an exceptional network of suppliers, so no job is out of scope. Find Gretna Signworks on Facebook or visit them at 2125 Bell Chase Highway today. Friends, is your morning tea just not your cup of tea? Then try the tea blends of Viridian Tea Company. At Viridian Tea Company, they sell blends guaranteed to make you think outside the box. With such blends as Tea of the Necropolis, Quantum Mechanics, Spider Witch, and many more, your tea experience will be out of this world. Look for the blends at Tubby and Coo's Mid City Bookshop, located at 631 North Carrollton, or on Etsy at Viridian Tea Company. Try Viridian Tea Company today. Your taste buds will thank you. You've waited for it, and now it's here. Get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt and help support our show. These 100% cotton black t-shirts with the Week in Geek Radio Show logo are going fast. So don't wait. Go to twigradio.com and order your shirt now. Just go to twigradio.com and get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt. 15 bucks up to XL, $17 for 2X and 3X. That's twigradio.com. Now, back to the Week in Geek with local celebrity, Brian Held, hashtag LCBH. Here are your hosts, local celebrity, Brian Held, and uh, and that other guy. Uh, what's his name again? This is Brian Held from the Week in Geek radio show on News Talk 99.5 WRNO. And tonight I'm joined by artist J.R. Mounts. How are you, sir? I'm doing fine. Thank you for having me on the show. Absolutely, man. So, man, you are getting into all kind of crazy stuff, but I wanted to focus on something first out of the gate. You are a fiercely independent artist. Tell me tell me how you got here and what that really means. Uh, for myself, every artist, I would think, would probably say they've always been an artist. They've never not been an artist. You know, Ever since they were a kid, they were either drawing or creating uh, music or something, I'm no different. When I was a kid, I always wanted to emulate Disney or, or Godzilla or anything Marvel was doing with Spider-Man. And as you get more talented, you, you kind of hone those, those uh, focuses. And I learned to play guitar, I learned to songwrite. And as I was drawing, I just thought I would make logos. But eventually, as you get into bands and get into music, you become a storyteller. You realize it's story that is the most important thing. So 
when I stopped writing music for bands and being in bands and trying to do music for musical theater, I turned it back on myself and my friend said, you know, why don't you just start drawing comic books? And that wasn't something I ever considered. I just wanted to be an artist. And after thinking about it, it was an opportunity for me to do all original work. I was never in a cover band when I was a musician. Um, I didn't want to cover uh, anybody else's material when I was writing for a musical theater. It was always about writing something new. And comics allows me to write anything I want. No, I have to edit myself, which is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. But, you know, you're so right because there's so many people who go the route of just kind of copying things. Now, that's not a bad way to get started, you know, but we do sure. need fresh new content. And that's great that you've got this. Now, speaking of your content, you have something that's really got me intrigued called Fried Pickle Noir. Can you tell me what this is? In a nutshell, Fried Pickle Noir is Sin City meets Veggie Tales. Nice. Crime stories about fruits and vegetables trying to bump each other off mob style in a seedless city called The Pits, starring a fried pickle character named Q Cumbersome as he fights the meatheads, melonheads, and eggheads uh, with characters like Hal Raisin, Hater Tot, and Samuel Jackson. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's my that's my Spielberg elevator pitch. <laughs> Dude, that's great. Where did you come up with this? I was eating fried pickles. <laughs> oh, all right, that's fair. I'm not, it's no joke. I was I was trying to. My friend had said start drawing comic books for a living because I doodled some stuff on our Halloween candy bowl at work, and people thought they were actually characters from a from a comic book or a children's story. And so she said, "I think you better start drawing comics." I was trying to think of something. I had created the scary tales, uh, kind of a, an homage to the 50s and 60s and 70s comic strips of like Peanuts or later on like Calvin and Hobbes, only mix it up with Nightmare Before Christmas. And I wanted, to, I wanted these kids to draw their own comic books and to make their own costumes. So I thought they're not going to read Batman or Daredevil. They're going to read their own comic book. It's got to be you know, kind of a story within a story. We'll break into the story at one point. All right. And uh, we were eating fried pickles, and my friend uh, said, you know, you should make a fried pickle character. And it was like a light went off. Wow. And I was watching crime stories, and uh, fried pickle noir came right out of the gate. I knew exactly what his name was, too cumbersome. I knew the the bad guys were meat meatheads and melonheads and eggheads. It all just sort of came right off of the shelf. No. Because I was, I was looking for that idea. No, that's good, man. That's great. Now, you have another idea, and I wanted to bring this up because one of my most favorite terms, and people who know me well know, is uh, silver lining. There's always a silver lining to, to look out for. <laughs> and you recently had a Kickstarter complete called Silver Linings. Tell me about this. Silver Linings is my, uh, my greatest work. After doing um, the fried pickle and the scary tales for the last eight years, um, I wanted to try something different. Uh, I had done something different a while ago about an adult uh, called Stuck in My Head, but that was just for adults. Um, kids couldn't read it. So I thought, all right, you know what, let's, let's try something that's not pickles, not for adults, and not necessarily for children. Let's go for like a fantasy drama. And I've always wanted to write about old people, you know, the elderly. Okay. And this idea of this old man and an alien, kind of like E.T. meets Cocoon meets Close Encounters. All right. Uh, meets War of the World. Uh, and this whole idea came to me, and once again, I kind of knew what I wanted the story to be about. It was about this friendship of these two beings that need each other. And the whole idea is to play on words. For every cloud, there's a silver lining. This man's life is, is a mess. He's a widower. His brother's just died. He's alone. He's got no friends. And his farm is dying. And suddenly this alien crashes into his barn and becomes the greatest friend he's ever had. Well, and, you know, you sent us an uh, an advanced uh, reader's copy that we got to take a look at, and, and I just, I loved it. I thought it was a wonderful story, but one of the things that I really thought was interesting was, uh, you know, this being a Kickstarter, you always have to go to the sort of the next level in order to make it intriguing to get people to, you know, back your project, and this book has its own soundtrack. Tell me about that. It's one of those things where if you can always revisit the things you love and incorporate them, uh, it becomes even more original. I loved writing musical theater. I loved writing stories and songs. I was in bands. And I thought, you know what? 
Uh, a couple of my past projects have had some music in it, but this one I wanted to write an all instrumental score. Only this time, rather than having any kind of electrical, electrical instrument, I want it to be just acoustic. And that means even some of the heavier moments, but it would be all acoustic. And um, it's a, I have a piece of crap acoustic guitar, so it's very difficult for me to play on. <laughs> all right. Um, so I, I thought, all right, well, how can I, how can I mask my, my ineptitude you know, and focus on Melanie? Well, I can get my best friends, uh, Tom Mathis on drums. He's the only drummer I'll ever play with. And uh, he and I usually do rock bands. You know, we're usually in rock bands. And I said, look, we're going to do a rock uh, score, but it's going to be instrumental and it's going to be kind of rustic. So it's acoustic. So don't be bashing like John Bonham, you know? (laughs) Right, right. And uh, my best friend, Mike McQuaid, uh, he and I used to write musical theater and be in a band together. And he is an awesome bass player and pianist, and he now mixed and mastered this entire CD. So these guys, Mike, Mike, took the heaviest brunt of this CD by taking all of my crappy tracks, uh, playing on top of Tom's great drums and having to make them sound musical. <laughs> okay. And he, he did it. He did it in spades. Yeah. It, it allowed the music to represent the story in a way that, um, much of the same way John Williams, uh, enhances anything Spielberg or George Lucas does. Mike and Tom did this for me for silver linings to oh. make this music. It elevates the the art and the story, um, makes it an even better project. No, and I and I completely agree. It is it's such a nice accompaniment to the the book, and it just I enjoyed it very much. So uh, I you. I know that you you do a bit of traveling uh, for shows and stuff. Are you going to be in the New Orleans metro area anytime soon? I'm just now looking at my con list for next year, my convention schedule. I've only got 12 shows booked for next year. And uh, anybody who's been on the circuit uh, the last few uh, couple of years have noticed that shows are getting a lot harder to, to pick between. And not all shows are great. So I've had to um, – I used to do 40 shows a year. Wow. And right now I can only do 12 next year. So I haven't – I don't have a New Orleans on my, on my radar yet, but it's uh, – Look, if there's a show that I need to go to, you let me know, because uh, uh, this is all I do. We will absolutely let you know. So uh, if you could be so kind, tell folks out there, tell our listeners how they can find you out on the net and keep up with all these great projects you're working on. Well, you can contact me through my Facebook at my name, J.R. Mounts. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter at pickledtweets.com under Q Cumbersome or my name. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram under my name, just JR Mounts, no periods. Um, my website, uh, I, I'm probably taking that down and re- revamping it because it's a little buggy. But normally you can find me at scarytalesnoir.com, scary adding an I to the, uh, to the name. But uh, literally on most people just Facebook me and <laughs> I just send them a PayPal invoice. But I usually tell them anything they need to know uh, through Facebook or Instagram or uh, Twitter. Got to love that social media. Well, JR, thank you so much for taking the time to spend with us tonight and tell us about all these projects you're working on, and we look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you, Brian. Have a great time. All right. Guys, stay tuned. When we get back, we're going to close out the show as we always do with This Week in Geek History. You're listening to The Week in Geek on News Talk 99.5 WRNO. Yeah. Whoa. What you call a young king living to tell a other kind of off-grid, no visits? Whoa, took down Bucky five minutes. Whoa. You've waited for it, and now it's here. Get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt and help support our show. These 100% cotton black t-shirts with the Week in Geek Radio Show logo are going fast. So don't wait. Go to twigradio.com and order your shirt now. Just go to twigradio.com and get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt. 15 bucks up to XL, $17 for 2X and 3X. That's twigradio.com. Friends, is your morning tea just not your cup of tea? Then try the tea blends of Viridian Tea Company. At Viridian Tea Company, they sell blends guaranteed to make you think outside the box. With such blends as Tea of the Necropolis, Quantum Mechanics, Spider Witch, and many more, your tea experience will be out of this world. Look for the blends at Tubby and Coo's Mid City Bookshop, located at 631 North Carrollton, or on Etsy at Viridian Tea Company. Try Viridian Tea Company today. Your taste buds will thank you. Black Tie Tans, the premier mobile spray tanning professionals of New Orleans. 
Black Tie Tans will come to you and give you a natural glistening glow on the go. First-time customers get 20% off their first tan. Find them on Facebook at Black Tie Tans or email them at blacktietans at gmail.com to set your appointment. Going to a wedding? Going out to the club? Black Tie Tans will give you the look you need. Black Tie Tans. Tell your pale friends. Boldly going where no bar has gone before. The Bad Wolf is a bar, restaurant, and game shop all in one. You can't beat our specialty drinks, fresh food, and a variety of RPGs, board games, and miniature games for sale or rent. Stop by and hang out or attend one of our regularly scheduled events all in a non-smoking environment. The Bad Wolf Bar and Grill is located at 2010 O'Connor Street in Gretna or find us at badwolfbar.com. The Bad Wolf Bar and Grill, where everybody knows you. Your game. Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmaid by Nancy Hansen, is now an audiobook read for you by Brian Hell. It's a tale of a young girl from Tortuga who disguises herself as a boy and bluffs her way onto a pirate ship, chasing after her one true love, only to find adventure on the high seas. Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmaid is available on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. Get your copy of Jezebel Johnston today. My name is Optimus Prime, and you are listening to The Week in Geek. Autobots, transform and roll out. Welcome back. This is The Week in Geek. I'm your host, D-Squared, along with... Brian Held. You know, that's John Bailey, and John has been on, like, like he's doing Subaru commercials now. He's yeah. doing, like, 8 million commercials, all national spots. Pretty crazy. Yeah. Now, as always, we want to strongly urge you to check out the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash The Week in Geek. Check out our website at twigradio.com. Follow us on Twitter at Twig Radio and the Instagrams, The Week in Geek. Now, Brian, how can people listen to this lovely show? Well, if you miss any part of tonight's show or you want to catch your favorite part again, you can always find us on Spreaker.com or download Spreaker for your smartphone or tablet. We're also on iTunes, YouTube, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, um, the Edge Radio US, the iHeartRadio app, and at WRNO.com. And your mama's house. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, always your mama's house. Right. All right. Uh, hold on a second, Brian. Oh, yeah. So Dave is trying to get our prize winner on the line, Mr. Ashley Nichols. And when we talk to him, we're going to do uh, This Week in Geek History uh, in a second. Yes. Ashley, you're live on the air, so don't curse, all right? All uh, right. I'll try to be good. All right. Good. So uh, you, you were listening to the show. You heard us announce your lovely name. Uh, actually, I was uh, driving for Uber, uh, making a little money, and uh, my buddy Paul does your merch. Uh, he called me up and said, hey, are you listening to the radio? Like, Look at that. No, merch but I can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so how did there you... Are, there I am. <laughs> how did you enter, dude? How did you find out about the contest? Uh, Facebook. I follow y'all's Facebook page, and I got a number of friends who do, and uh, saw that it said like and comment, or share, like and share, whatever it was. I did exactly what the instructions told me to. Look at that. Somebody reads the instructions, Brian. Hey, look, it's unlike you, he actually read. Shut your pile. <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah. Ashley, thanks so much. You're going to get uh, Pantheon by Eric Cyrodiil. That is a signed copy and uh, some Twig Radio swag. And uh, we have to, we, I think we have some GameStop swag to throw in there, too. Look at that. Awesome. Gee. Yes. So uh, we'll be in touch, and I'll make sure to get it to you soon. Sounds good. I appreciate it, guys. Have fun on the radio. Yes, sir. Thank you for listening. All right. Now it's time for... This Week in Geek History. We're sending you back to the future. Yes! Oh, my God! This Week in Geek History is brought to you by Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmaid by Nancy Hansen, read by Brian Held, available on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. This Week in Geek History. Yes! All right, you ready? Wow. First yes. item out of the gate, uh, December 3rd, 1994. Sony releases the very first PlayStation gaming console in Japan. In Japan? Yes. How did we find out about it then? Well, because, you know, they get it first and then we get it. 
But what's, what? We, yeah. get, we get hand me downs? We are from Japan? We get hand me downs? Oh, dude, that's how it is, man. America. That, no, well, so <laughs> what's interesting is there was a lot of controversy around this because. <laughs> Sony was originally working with Nintendo to produce their Super Famicom system where they were going to use a CD. Oh. And then Nintendo, like, like basically dishonored Sony and, and <laughs> cut them off to work with Philips. And Sony was like, how dare you stay in our honor? And so they moved forward. They committed Harry Carey? Uh, n- no. 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 Oh, okay. they- <laughs> What? No, no. Sony moved forward with the the PlayStation. That's why we have oh. PlayStation because Nintendo messed up and and cut them. Wow! Yeah. Look at that. Now they're finally g- getting back to relevancy with the Switch. Is that what's going on? Well, it took a while, but yeah, apparently that so. and Pokemon Go. Right. Uh, all right. December fifth, nineteen eighty. I'm not going to make you guess this one. Starring Aww. Sam J. Jones, Melody Anderson, um, Timothy Dalton, and Max von Sydow. It is Flash Gordon. <laughs> yes, there you go. Oh, Sam was so cool to meet over at Wizard World. He was. He, he's a genuinely nice guy. The funniest part was when, when him and uh, Lou Ferrigno would sit there and talk, and their biceps would be like, bop, bop, bop. Bicep oh. fight. Oh, yeah, no, they're huge guys. All right, uh, here's a real old one. December 6th. 1768. The very first edition of the Encyclopedia Britannica is published um, somewhere in England. But uh, the interesting part about this is uh, the set runs 2,391 pages, includes 160 copper plate illustrations. However, However, one set of the illustrations, a three-page depiction of female pelvises and fetuses <laughs> in the midwifery article, nice. will be torn from every copy by order of King George the Third. Bunch of prudes, man! <laughs> what a bunch of prudes! Now, now, what year was it officially used to kill a cockroach? I'm <laughs> curious. I was swat a kid, <laughs> right? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, let's see. On December 7th, 1979. So is that, why the, is that why the Puritans left? They were like, oh, the profanity and all these encyclopedias. Get on the boat, son. Right. We can do it on the boat. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, seize the release of uh, Paramount Pictures releases. The very first Star Trek, the motion picture. Which, oh, uh, yeah. Was, was that V'ger? V'ger. <laughs> God, that yeah. was such a badass movie it, it, and, and like all right badass like bad it was just bad yeah it was no it was pretty terrible not very good at all yeah um oh, all right yoy, yoy. uh garrett Which one was save the whales that was four that was four, four yes yeah. uh voyage home yes that was terrible too so our buddy garrett buddy garrett manual will like this one december 8th 2003 <laughs> Sees the very first episode of the reimagined Battlestar Galactica miniseries <gasps> on the Sci Fi Channel. Wow, Star Cabacula. Yes. What we were talking about last week about Star Trek or something, where where they 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 still can't get it right or something. Like that, like they even their movies are crap too. You know, except for First Contact. Yeah, uh, yeah. You well, know, uh, lately, and and we have a guest coming in a couple of weeks who's really gonna. Is that what it was? Because we were talking about something just just the way like like they were trying to sue somebody else again. Oh no, they're getting sued. Yeah, but wait, we were gonna save that until our guest came in and really kind of dug into it. I know. I know. It's tough. Fine. All right. <laughs> Tune in next week when we find out the real dirt. <laughs> All right. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay, last item on my history list is December 9th, 1991. Is the High Performance Computing and Communication Act of 1991, which drafted and introduced by Senator Al Gore. What? He created the internet! Ah, yes. He did! <laughs> He said it. It must be true. He did not. He was actually misquoted what? by CNN. And uh, let's see. No, he, he said, created it. Uh, what was it? Um, <laughs> it's in this article here. During my service in the United States Congress, I took the initiative in creating the Internet. So <laughs> That's awesome. But he didn't say I invented the Internet, right? It was just through this act, right, helped pave the way. Oh. 
Okay. You know, but he's right. not saying he invented it. Sure. Right? right. But he was misquoted, and it has uh, lived on in infamy ever since. Well, he, he didn't create anything. If he didn't create Space Force, well, then he's out. <laughs> Space Force. All, All right. right. Birthdays? We got 20 seconds. Uh, Brendan Fraser, Jeff Bridges, Amy Acker, Terry Hatcher, Michael Dorn, and Simon hey, Helberg. Morph. All right, there we go. All right, till next time, keep your nerd flag raised high. G-F-L. You may not have the cash, but you'll make that girl your own. If you've only got a mustache, a mustache, a mustache, if you've only got a mustache. Walton and Johnson, making mornings great on News Talk 99.5 WRNO-FM, New Orleans. An iHeart Radio station.